Hi, my name's Scott Heron. In your cello lesson today, we're going to be talking about the third study on the grade three syllabus called Super Heroic. This is a great piece. It reminds me of the James Bond theme. Uh. I think so. So it's called Super Heroic. So no greater hero than James Bond. He's saved the world so many times. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's fitting. And that that same little motif comes back in bar three. So there as well. So what makes that so cool? Well, it's chromatic. So you've got a D, E flat, a e natural, and then again, and you've also got um, uh, you've also got this lovely double stop note, which is a drone underneath. as well this G, which plays the whole title. But the main thing is, is that um, there's a hairpin. So it starts very quietly. There's a hairpin which climaxes in the third bass, so it goes to here. So try and move your eyebrows while you do that. So the top note reads your eyebrows the most. So um, now usually um, you would play a figure like that starting with an up bow. So it's really, it makes sense and it feels natural to do a crescendo with an up bow. So you go up. So on the strong beat, which is the third beat, you would be at the heel of the bow, but they want you to do it the other way around, so that's actually quite tough. So, so speed your bow up, advance the million dollar, and then you slow it down. So start slowly, and then crescendo up to there. So practice that. Practice that idea. It's quite, it's quite a tricky little idea. So, um, you'll notice that um, I started off by playing quite slowly so I did two versions of the tempos the first play along that I did at the beginning was I played it at crotchet equals nine sorry 76 so that's the speed that I would recommend you play at I, I, I personally feel that um, even though it's marked Allegro and the slowest tempo marking um, for Allegro is 98 I think it's very fast and um, I think it's it's possible that the whole thing will fall apart. So I would recommend that you play it at 76. I think it still sounds fantastic. And um, I think it'd be better safe than sorry. And it just feels a little bit more secure. And it, it, I think it musically it feels better. It's not so quite so hectic um, as well. So, um, so yeah. What about the rhythms? Well, it's four, four, you've got crotchets and minims. And in this study for the first time, you've got semi, semi quavers. So in the other two studies you don't, but you have in this one. So um, watch out for all of those. So there are lots of little fast notes, like in the second bar. So that's just an ascending scale, isn't it? So, uh, so um, yeah, and then you've got a descending scale bar four. Do you notice that those bars start with a with a double stop note, uh, middle two notes, uh, and then a bar four, uh, top two notes. Uh. That's really good fun to play. Really, really good fun to play. So, um, what about the articulation? Well, there are lots of slurs. So, um, bring those out. And also, very interestingly, in bar five, you have repeated up bows so like this. Uh, up and then an up. So press your bone to the string, release, and then do it again. And that brings you to the heel. Press, release, press, release. And that'll sound really, really articulate. Give each note a little bite. So that's fun. Make sure you have the, the little um, gap between the notes and you press and release. That's my top tip for that. And um, what about the notes? Well, it's in, it's in G. Um, G major, so um, yeah. So watch out for your third finger F sharps. 
the very first bar I already mentioned about the E flat here, and then the E natural. The next bar, B flat, and then the e, B natural. I love that note. So watch out in bar four for the C sharp, F sharp. I love that scale. Extended hand position. So make sure the aperture of your hand is quite wide there. So stretch those knuckles on. And you can do a little bit of this forward rotation and backward rotation on as well, if you like that sort of thing. That might help, try that out too, to get all the weight from your arm into your fingers. Bar five, an E flat, ooh, a cheeky E flat. And B flat, so those two are adjacent. And then a backwards E, e flat. F sharp, that's a really big stretch from there, the E flat to the F sharp. And this is the hardest bar in the whole piece. So, so here we're in third position land. So the whole piece um, is, is in either half position on, or first position on. But here we're in third position. So how do you find that? Well, first position, um, it's here. So if you think of it like a guitar, well, this is a D major chord. And we're gonna go into lower second uh, And then we're gonna go to higher second uh, And then we're gonna go up one more step to third position uh, And there we are. There. So your first finger goes where your fourth finger usually goes. So that's third position uh, There. And you can check that against your open G to make sure that they're, they're agreeing. So the second note is a B natural, so you have to do an extension. They tell you to do that, which is very helpful. So they put lots of fingerings in. And if they tell you to do something, you must do it because this is a study. So you can't just do any old thing if they specify something for you to do in particular. So, and those ones are adjacent. And what about the next note? So uh, that sounds like Glenn Miller, doesn't it? Uh, in the mood. So uh, the fourth fingers are not adjacent. So, so that fourth finger is one finger higher than it was in the D string. That sounds like um, Philip Glass. Check him out if you don't know him. And what else? Um, yeah, that's basically it as far as the notes are concerned. So you got a big stretch into fourth position or extended third position. And that's it. Those are those are all of the issues to do with the notes. And what about the dynamics? So it starts off piano, you've got a hairpin, same thing in bar three. At the very end, there's a crescendo in bar five, going up to forte um, in bar six, but then there's a diminuendo immediately after that, going down to piano at the end. It sounds like a, a weather forecast, doesn't it? There'll be a cold front and then there'll be that sort of thing there. So those are all of the issues. So um, have fun with this, try the two tempos, um, with the play along at the beginning and see which one you prefer. I would lean towards the first one, the slower one, personally. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please give my channel um, a like and please subscribe and join me for some of my other videos. I've made videos of the other two studies um, on, the, on the grade three syllabus. So please join me for those. And um, all that remains to be said is, Ciao, until the next video.